വെൽക്കം ബാക്ക് ടു ടേൽസ് ഓഫ് കെമിസ്ട്രി ഇൻ കെമിക്കൽ കൈനറ്റിക്സ് പ്രീവിയസ് എപ്പിസോഡ്സ് വി ഡിസ്കസ്ഡ് വാട്ട് ഇസ് ഓർഡർ ഓഫ് എ റിയാക്ഷൻ ദെൻ ഹൗ ടു കാൽക്കുലേറ്റ് ദ ഓർഡർ ബൈ ഇൻറ്റഗ്രേറ്റഡ് റേറ്റ് ലോ റേറ്റ് കോൺസ്റ്റൻറ്റ് ഇസ് കാൽക്കുലേറ്റഡ് ബൈ ഇൻറ്റഗ്രേറ്റഡ് റേറ്റ് ലോ ഇക്വേഷൻ നൗ ഇൻ ടുഡേസ് എപ്പിസോഡ് ലെറ്റ് എസ് സ്റ്റഡി certain more terms like pseudo first order reaction what is this pseudo first order reaction these are reactions which appear to be of a higher order but actually they are first order reactions they look like they are a second order reaction or a third order a higher order reaction but the experiments are proving that they are first order reaction under certain conditions these are called pseudo unimolecular or first order reaction it will be clear if we take an example example for a pseudo first order reaction is hydrolysis of ester now i have taken here ethyl ethanoate ethyl ethanoate is subjected to hydrolysis what is hydrolysis treating ethyl ethanoate with plenty of water that is called hydrolysis now this reaction takes place in acid medium and the result the products are an acid and an alcohol so you will get ethanoic acid and ethanol as the product now if you write the rate for this equation as per uh, uh, law of mass action this is equal to a constant i have taken the constant as k dash then into the concentration of the ester into the concentration of water but you are using so much of water that its concentration practically does not change a small fraction of that excess water that you have taken is consumed which means this k dash which is a constant and the concentration of water which also remains constant can be taken together as a new constant that's why i've written here r is equal to k k is a new constant which is k dash into the concentration of water so r is now equal to k into the concentration of ester so such reactions are called pseudo first order reactions they appear to be of higher order but they are actually first order reactions so please learn this example as it is the way i have given here learn it as it is now certain key points to note these reactions or those reactions which occur in a single step okay they have the rate calculated by law of mass action and the rate shown by rate law expression are the same okay so this is something you have already realized that is in the previous episode we discussed law of mass action need not be always correct in elementary reactions law of mass action is correct what does that mean in a single step reaction that is the elementary reaction a rate which is calculated from law of mass action 
or from experiment both the rates are the same second point is complex reactions are completed in multiple steps but every step in a complex reaction is individually called an elementary reaction so these are just certain points for your information now this is very important molecularity of a reaction what is molecularity of a reaction the total number of reactants which take part in a particular step of a reaction or the elementary reaction of a chemical equation is called molecularity of that reaction i repeat this with an example now we are taking let us consider 2a plus b okay giving c this is the reaction now this is a this can be a single step reaction or this can be a one step in a complex reaction then for this reaction or for this step of a complex reaction the molecularity is total number of moles or molecules that take part two of a combines with 1b so 2 plus 1 molecularity of this reaction is equal to 3 okay so if you consider a reaction n2o5 gives you n2o3 plus o2 so for this step of the reaction okay the molecularity is just one because you have taken one molecule of n2o5 in this reaction another example suppose you take 2no plus o2 gives you 2no2 then here the molecularity is 2 plus 1 that is 3 all right so that is about molecularity let us now see what is the difference between order and molecularity this question was asked several times in isc board examination for two marks okay generally there will be an indication uh, how many points you need to write give two differences or give three differences etc generally two differences are asked so what i mean here is i will explain all the differences you can choose the best two that you can remember first of all order is the sum of exponents in the rate law expression or a rate law equation what i mean is suppose you have written r is equal to k into a to the power of x into b to the power of y then order of this reaction is x plus y sum of you know the powers to which each concentration term is raised in the rate law equation sum of exponents in the rate law equation but molecularity is the total number of molecules taking part in the reaction so if it is 2 moles or 2a plus b giving c then the molecularity here is equal to 3 all right now order of a reaction can be of any fractional values or it can even be zero order can be of fractional value or order can be zero but molecularity can never be zero it's always a whole number except zero all right molecularity can never be zero what does that mean when we say that zero molecules are reacting together to give us product it doesn't make any sense right so 
molecularity is always a whole number except zero. Order is an experimental quantity whereas molecularity is theoretical. You just look at the balanced equation. You know, you just need one elementary reaction to determine molecularity. You don't conduct any experiment here. Then order can change with respect to temperature or pressure whereas molecularity of a reaction is invariable. It does not change. Whether you change, you increase, you decrease the temperature, molecularity will not change. Finally, the last point is for a complex reaction, Overall order is determined by the slowest step. I hope you remember the statement which we studied. The slowest step of a chemical reaction is called the rate determining step. So, rate, uh, so order of similarly, order is also determined by the rate determining step itself. Okay, but Molecularity, in the case of molecularity, there is no significance for this, uh, you know, a word that rate determining step or, you know, things like that. Every step in a complex reaction is called an elementary step. Okay. And uh, in an elementary step, how many molecules are taking part that determines the molecularity of that particular step. Okay, so this point is important for a complex reaction. Just like the rate is determined by the slowest step, order is also determined by the slowest step. That is, you apply law of mass action to the slowest step you can calculate the order of the reaction. Okay, so these are the differences between order and molecularity. Any two or three points you must study. Now, next topic is temperature dependence of the rate of a reaction. Will the rate of a reaction vary according to temperature. If yes, will it increase or decrease? Now, we cannot just say that for all reactions, the rate increases with increase in temperature. That's why I've written here, most of the chemical reactions are accelerated. Its rate increases by increase in temperature. Most of the reactions rate will increase with increase in temperature. Generally, for a chemical reaction, with every, uh, you know, 10 degree rise in temperature, the rate constant is almost doubled. For every 10 degree rise in temperature, the rate constant doubles. Mathematically, how do we write this? Temperature coefficient, okay? Temperature coefficient is the term which is given to represent the increase or the dependence of temperature on the rate of the reaction. Temperature coefficient mu is ratio between rate constant at a 10 degree higher temperature to rate constant at a particular temperature. T plus 10 degree to T degree Celsius. Rate co temperature coefficient is the ratio between rate constant at T plus 10 degree to rate constant at T degree Celsius. Now, it's proved that this is most of the time equals to 2. In certain cases, it is equal to 3. Now, according to collision theory, the rate of a reaction depends on something called collision frequency 
also on fraction of effective collation. So there are three, two terms that we need to learn now. One, what is this collation frequency? Okay. And second is what is the meaning of fraction of effective collation? All right. So before that, let us find out what is the idea here. According to collation theory, what are we trying to learn or what are we trying to prove here? So just a while ago, when we discussed this temperature coefficient, we understood that temperature has a direct influence on the rate of a reaction in most of the cases. Okay, so is it just the temperature or is it anything beyond this temperature? Yes, as you increase the temperature, what happens is the collision, number of collisions between the particles increases. So I repeat, when you increase the temperature, wherever this has a positive influence, meaning wherever with increase in temperature, the rate increases, then a particular theory called collision theory explains how rate depends on increase in temperature. According to this collision theory, as you increase the temperature, Collision frequency increases as well as number of effective collisions also increase. First of all, let us define collision frequency. The number of collisions taking place per second per unit volume in the reaction mixture or of the reaction mixture is called collision frequency. The total number of collisions that take place per unit second per unit volume in the reaction mixture. That is called collision frequency. Similarly, as the temperature increases, number of Particles that result in effective collision also increases. That is effective collision meaning the molecules which after collision gives products. We mean to say when you just increase the temperature, number of collisions increases, number of times the reactants hit each other, that increases. But not every such collision will lead into the product formation. Not all collisions are effective. Only certain number of these collisions result in product formation. Such collisions which result in product formation, they are called the effective collision. So now, according to collision theory, okay, rate of reaction depends upon collision frequency as well as the fraction of effective collision. Fraction of effective collision means what fraction of the total collision will result in product formation. Effective collisions takes place only in those molecules which have threshold energy and proper orientation. Now see, we understand that collisions are increasing. We also understood that not every collision will result in product formation. Now, which all collisions will result in product formation? That's what we are looking now. Which all collisions will result in product formation? First of all, the particles that are colliding with each other must have Threshold energy. What is threshold energy? 
okay so threshold energy is a certain minimum amount of energy minimum amount of energy required by the reactants required by the reactants okay to form product to form products this is called threshold energy we mean here that if there are two particles that they are that collides okay there are two particles which are colliding with each other but they don't have that minimum amount of energy required then such collisions are useless they won't give you any product that in other words been for product formation there has to be some amount of energy you know within the reactants so that minimum amount of energy which has to be possessed by the reactants is called threshold energy okay now the second term which is not clear is the particles must have a proper orientation what do we mean by orientation well suppose my reaction is now a2 plus b2 gives you c all right so let me represent the a2 molecule like this a single bond a or whatever this is my a2 molecule when it collides with p2 suppose if the collision is like this this is not called a proper orientation why here just one of the a atoms are colliding with one b atom whereas an effective collision will be when this both the atoms of a collide simultaneously with both atoms of b this is an effective uh, collision provided they have threshold energy this is the right orientation that we need now you see your a is like this and your b is approaching a in this format or this fashion then this is also not called proper orientation so the molecules which hit each other molecules which collide each other they need to have a proper orientation okay now to conclude this with let us see increase in rate of a reaction with temperature is brought out either of the two or a combination of both the factors that are discussed below one is increase in collision frequency other one is effective collision which we just realized the meaning which we know now increase in collision frequency collision frequency is the total number of collisions that take place per second per unit volume effective collision is what fraction of the total collision will result in product formation so when the temperature increases okay any one of these two will increase or maybe both will increase all right now next concept is concept of activation energy and transition state theory transition state is also called the activated complex activated complex so let's see now what is the meaning of this activated complex okay all chemical reactions do not take place at room temperature we know this some extra energy must be supplied to those reactants 
if they do not react at room temperature as in in certain cases we need to heat the reactants why are we heating the reactants to supply energy to the reactants then what will happen see they are not reacting at room temperature because they do not have threshold energy by supplying extra energy what you are doing is you are increasing the energy of the reactants from whatever energy it was earlier you are you know increasing it to the minimum amount of energy for them to react that is threshold energy so this excess energy which you are supplying that is called activation energy okay so the excess energy which you are supplying so that the reactants can attain threshold energy that extra energy is called activation energy threshold energy minus the average energy of the reactant molecule meaning threshold energy minus whatever energy is already possessed by the particle threshold energy minus whatever energy is already possessed by the particle that is called activation energy let's see now how do we represent this graphically so graphical representation of you know threshold energy progress of reaction is plotted against energy so i have taken a, a reaction a plus b2 now this a plus b2 has energy equal to er i mean average energy possessed by the reactant is er but the minimum energy required for the reaction is represented here as et et stands for threshold energy so your reactants have only this much of energy you need to raise that energy to et so et minus er this you will supply to the reactant and that is called ea that is activation energy this is the energy which is possessed by the particle this is the energy that they need to react so the difference in these two that must be supplied to the reactants that is called activation energy and once you supply that activation energy the reactants combine look at this it is a plus b2 right a plus b2 that is giving you now a a weak bond with the b and bond between this b and the other b is also weak so what do we understand a new bond is getting formed between a and one of the atoms of b simultaneously the bond between the two atoms of b is becoming a weak and that is called an activated complex which has a very short life because of its high energy activated complex or the transition state is an intermediate complex intermediates have a short life which is highly unstable due to high energy that intermediate or the transition state is unstable because it has a very high amount of energy so immediately from that activated complex you get new products your new product is ab plus b now in this diagram where i have represented ep 
energy of product is lesser than the energy of the reactant. It can be more than the energy of reactant also. I have just represented it as uh, the energy of product is lesser than the energy of the reactant. Okay, so this one diagram or graph explains to us what is threshold energy, what is activation energy and how is an activated complex formed. Moving on. For a reversible reaction, activation energies are different for both forward and backward reactions. Meaning, when you discuss about a reversible reaction and you want to express the activation energy, you need to be very specific whether you are discussing activation energy of the forward reaction or you are discussing activation energy of the backward reaction. Okay, so let us see graphical representation for an exothermic as well as for an endothermic reaction. The first representation is for exothermic reaction. What is an exothermic reaction? During the reaction, heat energy is given out to the surroundings. That is why, okay, Ep is lesser than Er. There is a certain amount of energy which is possessed by the reactants. But once the product is formed, okay, once the product is formed, the energy of the product is lesser than the energy of the reactant. So what happened here? Some part of energy is lost. What does that mean by, you know, saying some part of energy is lost? Some part of energy is given out to the surroundings. Now, coming to the point, we were discussing activation energy is different for the forward and backward reaction. Let's consider the forward reaction. In this case, what is the forward reaction? R giving you P is the forward reaction. Now, this is the energy possessed by the reactant. This is the threshold energy. Now, this difference, so kind of like this, is your activation energy for the forward reaction. But when you consider the backward reaction, what is the meaning of backward reaction? With this example, P gives you R. So, this is the energy possessed by P and this is the threshold energy. Which means you will have to supply this amount of energy. So, this is the activation energy for backward reactions. What is its energy now? What is the minimum energy required? Difference is to be supplied to P. So, activation energy for the same reaction, if it is reversible, it will be different for forward and backward reactions. And the last topic for today, endothermic reactions graph. As the reaction proceeds, in an endothermic reaction, okay, initially this will be the amount of energy that you will supply and this is for the forward reaction. Endothermic meaning during the reaction energy is absorbed by the uh, particle. So that energy remains within the product. That is why energy of product was more than the energy of reactants. But in the case of a backward reaction here, when you consider P giving you R, the activation energy will be lesser. So activation energy of backward reaction in an endothermic process is lesser than the activation energy 
of backward reaction in a exothermic reaction. Okay, this can be a filling the blanks question or else it can be asked as to draw the graph for exothermic and endothermic reaction and prove that um, activation energy for forward and backward reactions are different. Right? I hope you are understanding. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned for more videos.